Welcome to a new unit on Introduction to Machine Learning. In this part of the lecture, we will talk about performance evaluation. In, the in this first unit, we will discuss the basic idea of performance evaluation. So in machine learning, we want to obtain a model which has a strong prediction performance. So we want to know how well does my model perform on data from the same data generating process. The data generating process is the true underlying phenomenon creating the data. Our model is an attempt to reflect the data generating process as good as possible. The problem is we do not know the true data generating process. If we did, we wouldn't need the model anymore. Now the question is, how do we evaluate a model if we do not know how to generate data from the same data generating process? Well, we can use different techniques to do so. Um, first, we could just compute the model on a certain data set. This is um, called the training data. We could evaluate a model using the same training data. We could just check if the predictions from the model are similar to the actual Y values in the training data set. Alternatively, and preferably, we could use a separate new data set. This data set needs to be similar to the original in order to be useful. Remember, it has to be from the same data generating process. To evaluate if the predictions and the actual data are close, we use evaluation measures. Here, we use the word measure and metric synonymously. Performance evaluation is no witchcraft, nor is it rocket science. It is actually quite straightforward if you stick to some principles. Often, these principles are simple, even simpler than classical statistical model diagnosis. It relies on only a few assumptions because our goal is merely to see how well we are able to predict. Of course, there are some traps we should avoid. And even if we do not aim to cheat, sometimes we cheat by accident if we aren't careful enough. The upcoming units on performance evaluation will set you up with the essentials so that you don't stumble into common pitfalls. As we want to estimate a model performance in general, we need to think again about loss functions. The expected loss tells us the expected performance of our model. We call this expected loss generalization error. Since we can't compute the generalization error directly, we have to estimate it. We do that by computing the average loss. We can do that using the training data or new independent data. If we use training data, this will result in a too optimistic estimate. This is why we actually want to use separate independent test data. One example for a common estimate of the generalization error is the mean squared error, which is just the L2 loss. We will get back to that again later and also learn about all kinds of other generalization error estimates. These estimates we can call performance measures or evaluation measures. When we discussed losses in previous units, we talked about how to set up a learner and how to compute a model. We use the loss as something to optimize over. Of course, we cannot only use the loss for training a model, but also for evaluating a model. In an optimal scenario, we know exactly what we want. We know which loss should be used. We use this loss both for training and for evaluating. The loss used for learning is called inner loss. The loss used for evaluating is called outer loss. Think of a student. We want our student to learn how to program. We teach this, the student in programming and later the exam is also about programming. The student learns exactly what she is evaluated for. Imagine that the student would learn maths and then still get evaluated in programming. That would be weird, right? Well, in reality, we do not always have the possibility, however, to teach a student in programming. Sometimes maths is all we have. 
And teaching her in maths will give her a better ability to understand programming than not teaching her anything. Now in machine learning, a learner is the student and the inner loss cannot always be the same as the outer loss. This is because some losses are hard to optimize. In other scenarios, we have learners where the loss is not specified directly. Let's look at two examples, logistic regression and k-nearest neighbors. Logistic regression is often used because it is easy to compute and easy to interpret. With KNN, we have an algorithm without explicit loss minimization, so we don't really know the loss here. Now, when we want to compare models computed by logistic regression and KNN, we need to think about what is actually the evaluation measure. Maybe we are interested in a classification error. Maybe we're interested in a cost-weighted classification error. Maybe we need something more advanced for evaluation, like ROC or AUC. Understanding these questions and how to answer them is a topic of the upcoming units. So stay tuned to learn what cost-weighted classification error or AUC is.